I'm about to do an interview again. It's been a while, but I'm going to talk with Kerry Yonker, who I met during the tour down when we were out on the bicycle, uh, coming back from McLaren Vale, and we started chatting. And anyway, I saw her name again yesterday when I looked at the results of the Peaks Challenge for 2024, where she was the fastest female. We had a chat yesterday. I said, congratulations on what you've achieved. Uh, should we do a little interview? And that's what we're going to do. Sunday, when the ride was on in the Victorian high country, the weather was brutal, apparently. It was ex extremely hot, but I'll get her to tell you more. She'll join me shortly. I had uh, the best of intentions to do peaks this year, but I uh, didn't get to doing it. Aha. Okay, so here she is. And I'm going to throw her into the stream now and bang. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm excellent. And yourself? Well, very well. Good to see you again. Yes, you too. Different without a hel no helmet. I was just about to say I had no idea what you looked like because you were all <laughs> kitted up and uh, helmeted. It was hot in January and it was bloody hot on the weekend. So let's rip into it. Let's just talk quickly about your fast ride around the Victorian high country. It wasn't uh, part of your original plan. You were going to just go training, but then you decided, what the hell, I'll go and ride 230 kilometres. Well, the last few weeks I've... You know, on a on a weekend, it's always nice to get out with friends for a long ride. And I thought, oh, you know, maybe next weekend I'll go and do a long ride. But, you know, a long ride might be 120 to 180 Ks. I did actually do 200 the other day for the first time. Uh, and I just thought, well, if I'm doing a big ride by myself or big ride with some friends, what's better than if there's an event on with 2,000 friends uh, and it's 235K and over 4,000 metres climbing, which I've never done in my life. So I was like, well, that sounds like a better option and it will push me a bit more. So uh, we signed up. I've heard a little bit about the, the ride on Sunday and it was brutally hot, is that right? So I think there's two ways you can do the mountains, bloody cold or bloody hot. You've, you've opted for number two. Either extreme, your body's going to shut down. But if you're cold... You, you can't, you can get to a point where you cannot physically warm yourself up. So what's better, being hot or being cold? I much prefer the hot extreme, um, you know. So, and look, I am someone that I don't really struggle in the heat. People afterwards were saying that I looked really fresh and that I didn't have any salt stains on me. Um, so I granted I do need to be, be mindful that, maybe I'm just better suited to heat than, than others. So maybe I had a bit of a genetic advantage there. Um, but, you know, I figure with – I actually stopped three times and all three times I poured water over myself uh, and I even wet my shoes at one of the stops. Um, so the fact I only lost seven minutes in three stops, I was pretty impressed with those uh, triathlon sort of standard uh, transition skills. Um, but, no, it, it was toasty. And some of the stories you started to hear of just the absolute carnage on, on the back of falls was was quite funny, but obviously it's quite, quite serious. Um, you know, you, you need to look after your health. So you don't want people putting themselves in, in dangerous situations. But if we're talking mildly hot or mildly cold, uh, I'd always prefer the, the hot option. Okay. Did, is it right that it got to 40 around Omeo or something like that? Do you know? If That's what I believe. There? I haven't actually checked uh, what my Wahoo picked up, but um, no, it, it definitely was it was a furnace and you had people trying to ride in any sort of leaf of, of shade they could find. What would you tell people who are considering it and uh, don't want to sort of be... Uh, uh, deterred by the conditions that did uh, eventuate. At the end of the day, it's a it's a grand fondo. It's a participation event. Um, there's so many different aspects you can look at it. You've got people trying to set course records, uh, and then you've got people who are just trying to finish the event. So it's absolutely fantastic that it caters for absolutely anyone. You've had some people before who've been racing, you know, pro, and they've attempted it. Uh, to then someone that has barely ever ridden a bike before and they say, oh, that's a great challenge to target. So that's what's absolutely brilliant is it's something for everyone. Uh, and there's people trying to get PBs from previous times. Um, 
you know, I'd highly recommend it to 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 anyone. It is something that anyone can achieve. So if you're sitting there and you're a weekend rider and you get out, you know, 100 kilometres a week or 200 kilometres a week, it really is something that anyone can can achieve, which is fantastic. And the support from Bicycle Network is phenomenal, not just on the day. On the day, it was run spectacularly and they did really well to manage um, all the risks involved. From even you just start by descending Falls Creek and that can be quite quite scary. So, you know, there's... There's risks involved just in riding a bike as it is, let alone the heat, um, the length of the event. Um, but even in the lead up, they provide some excellent training rides, information sessions. Uh, so there's there's a great supportive network out there to help you um, get through the event. It's 12 months away now. So anyone that's listening to this and thinking, oh, it's something I'd like to do, there is a fantastic network of people around. Um, even on Facebook, there's a massive Facebook group, which I wasn't aware of. Um, so there's there's so many resources out there of how to how to challenge, how to take on the challenge, um, even training plans. So it's it's really for for anyone. Yeah, yeah, I I, I echo everything that you said. I, I think it's um, it really opened my eyes because the, the enthusiasm of everyone there makes it is contagious. It feels as though everyone there is there exclusively for the ride. So it's like it doesn't matter who you see, you know that you can talk about your cycling yeah honestly I had such a fun fun time um there's that's the thing I, I didn't want to have FOMO and miss out from I knew a few people doing it um I know Ali and Lee who are heavily involved Ali's the CEO of Bike Network and she really encouraged me to do it and you know I, I really struggle to say no to things so you know just just having that sort of sense of community of everyone up there on the mountain um was absolutely phenomenal and I know it's a lot of work for some of the lodges they don't like to open just for the weekend uh, it takes a lot of time and money to to open up their resorts so very grateful to the locals that do get behind um the event uh you, I think people don't realize sort of what it takes to organize an event of such size uh you know having to manage roads of 235 kilometers um there was a friendly highway patrol uh driver who a well, policeman who gave me a water bottle up uh up Hotham, so I was very grateful for that um but you just sort of see that everyone really really gets behind uh the event from the volunteers and, and those who are employed to, to actually make it happen um so once again you know just saying how phenomenal it is and that I could only encourage um more people to to get on board and sign up Can you just explain your time, uh, your average, uh, maybe if you have some power data, what kind of uh, numbers you were pushing? And just I actually haven't that. looked up my, um, my every, everything from, from the day, but basically ride time, 8 hours, 12 minutes. Uh, elapsed time was 8 hours, 19. Uh, people had joked to me about going sub 8. I've never done the event before, so I didn't even know what I was getting myself into other than it's one big day uh, and the advice that people say is to save yourself for the back of falls. So I know I did something like, I think I think I did around 270 or 280 watts up uh, to Wonga. Um, I know I started H- Hotham, I think high 260s, 270s. And I was thinking I wanted to ride it maybe like 240 or something. But I don't have any idea of what my current, fitness level is I haven't done any long climb, climbs lately I'm based in Melbourne and it's very flat within a 40 kilometer circumference of where I live like I live on the flat beach road so I haven't done any long steady efforts so going into the day I had no idea what power I could hold the only goal was to try and get a tow to Harrietville so you mm. have the Falls Creek, uh, Falls Creek descent got the Tawonga climb Tawonga descent and then a flat run in so that was my only goal sort of objective for for the day and then just to survive and just have fun there was no no racing like it's a fondo I've had so many people congratulating me I'm like thanks guys but I'm aware it's an amateur event um which is fantastic and it's doesn't take anything away from people who um set it as, as a goal um but in terms of yeah, you know, the power of the numbers, I someone asked was talking about my max speed so I now know my max speed was like 81 kilometers an hour started Potham at about 260, wanted to back off to 240, then started to have a sore throat and wasn't sure if I was unwell. And I was like, everyone who's been saying I'm going to burn out, they're right, look, I'm sick now. 
then I got a blood nose apothem. So I was like, okay, maybe I really am sick. Then I was sort of almost panicking a bit, being like, I really want to finish this. No way am I not finishing it. But at the same time, I don't want to pass out and end up <laughs> in an ambulance. So we did start to be a bit more cautious for the second half um, half of Hotham. Uh, and then, yeah, got to dinner plane, the, which was the first stop for me. Uh, quickly got my gels, um, took the lunch wrap, shoved it down my jersey, uh, tried to snack on it as we were descending. Um, from dinner plane and was getting rid of all the spinach and vegetables because I said, I don't need that. But I just thought, good to have something savoury. Um, so in the end, I averaged 217, I think, what's for Hotham, including my stop all the way from the bottom of falls to the finish. I think it was like 180 watts. I did have wheels for most of the way. I didn't touch the front until... Uh, until Harrietville, there was a little bit of time after one of the stops around the back that I was was by myself. And then eventually, one guy caught me and he towed me for like five six k to the base of falls. And then he cramped up falls, and I said bye, sorry, <laughs> I can't stop and I can't fix your cramping. Yeah. Um, so yeah, numbers, you. numbers That's phenomenal. It. Yeah. I, now that you're talking about it, I mean, I've only done it once, but all the places feel familiar because you're on a bike and you absorb it quickly right, if you've done yeah. something. But the road that leads down to the the run into the back of Falls must be the nicest ride that I've done. It, it's I mean, just it's a, very it's hot. Just a, and we, it's, it's, but it's a beautiful, like a rolling descent. It just when it's feels going like a, yeah. When it's going down, it's fantastic. When it's just going up at that one, two, three percent, which it actually does for a lot, that was just tormenting. We were just <laughs> saying, we, we all have this sort of elevation profile. We're like, please just go down, go down. It was quite funny when there were three of us together, just yeah, in, enjoying the descents, but uh, not not happy when there was any pos positive gradients. I guess that's what makes it fun because it's not a race like you know you you, you won, but uh, you you know you got a fast time, let's say. But when you're in crisis, you can have a laugh, you can look around, you can tell someone that you feel like shit. Whereas in a race, you're masking it, you're trying to uh, you know keep your your pro face on and uh, everything else. I love riding my bike. I love being fit and healthy and I love other sports too. And I love meeting people and they're all things that, that cycling is fantastic at providing. So I don't, people have said, oh, you, you look so fresh at the finish. Uh, you did so well. So people say, oh, you're really suited to long, long endurance events. Oh, you should race gravel. Oh, you should do these long stuff. Absolutely not. I have no desire to do, um, you know, that long endurance stuff in a professional capacity. Um, I, I love adventures and so, you know, if if there's opportunities for, for some occasional events like this, for sure I'll do it. I'm impressed by your time. I can't imagine doing it that quickly. So no, I, I definitely don't think it was anything fast. Um, you know, I know I think Justine Barrow's got the, the course record and, and went uh, like seven and a half hours. Um, I think she had some people sort of, as like her, her support crew. Um, and as I said, people had joked to me about going sub eight, uh, but I didn't even know what that meant. Um, but now Ali's asking me to be a, a ride leader for the eight hour group uh, for next year. And that would motivate me far more than someone saying, oh, can you just go shave 12 minutes off your time and post yourself a sub, 12, a sub eight hour? That's uh you know, watch your name with interest and see what comes next in an in, uh, evolving uh, career of opportunities. We'll see.